Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for The Great Wall. And, geez Louise folks, here's something you probably don't hear from me that often. I agree with Tom Vassell because Tom put this in his top 10 uh, best games of 2021. I think it was like his number five. And I don't know if I rated quite as high as him, but I totally get where he's coming from. This game is amazing. Amazeballs. This game's cup overfloweth in the biggest way. It is so full. It, this game has like... Five games worth of fresh, new, innovative ideas that completely change up the feel of a worker placement experience. And I mean, if, if it just had one of these ideas, I would have said, wow, this is a really phenomenal game. But the the uh, the way it changes the core precepts of worker placement with the idea of, oh, well, it, you know, some spots you can do immediately and other spots, the more important ones, you have to slowly fill up over time. But you're very restricted in how quickly you can go there. So as more players go there, more players are, oh, I want to jump in on that too and get a little something something. Even if somebody else did the majority of work, I want to get a little something out of it as well. And maybe, I, even though I don't get a lot, if I actually have a really strong overseer, my one thing that I contributed to gold could produce quite a bit more. Um, you know, I mean, so the worker placement plus the idea of, I, in a perfect world, you want to activate these completely by yourself. Push everybody else out. Use player turn order. Turn order is so important in this game to fill up the whole area. But then you suffer shame, shame, shame. These are really debilitating. A ton of points are lost, or if you're playing co-op or solo, if you get too many of them, you just instantly lose. They can be tough to get rid of, and the stuff you have to do to get rid of them is generally better spent elsewhere, like saving your troops from dying or whatever. So, who? what's a little shame between friends if I can use that to muscle everybody else out of the production? Um, so, the worker placement in this game is so fresh and sharp and original, and I love it. I guess it kind of... Is you know is, is a spiritual uh, follow up to the way Kalis works, where everybody puts all their stuff out and then things activate. But here, everybody puts all their stuff out, but not everything activates. Only the stuff that actually got filled up, and that is so cool. So just that one idea by itself, or that one approach, because it's actually a few different ideas melded together with shame and whatnot working into it, would have been enough to say, "Wow, this is a really fresh, cool worker placement game." But then on top of that, you've got I mean, geez, Louise. Look at how many special general, each one of them with their unique player power. A ton of them. I didn't even count so many of them. But, and, you know, and they're super important. Mastering the special power you have from game to game uh, is a, a really kind of directs your overall strategy. But one of the most agonizing decisions I have ever seen in board gaming is when you come over to the embassy and you say, oh, I'm going to hire another advisor. First of all, all these advisors, these special powers are even better. It's incredible. I mean, you're always going to be agonizing. Which one do I want? But then once you eventually take one, do I take it for the special power? Or do I take it to say, no, you're a passive person who upgrades my core special ability. That's an incredibly rich and tension-filled and interesting decision to make as well. And it works so wonderfully. Just that would have been the cornerstone of a game. And I would have said, wow, what a really great game. The way that players are working together um, to actually build or rebuild the wall or repair the wall to hold off the invaders, it's so clever because the synergy, even though this is at its heart a competitive game, and I'll come back to the co-op mode in a bit, this is a competitive game, but you are constantly given the opportunity um, and sometimes almost strong-armed in to working, colluding with other players. Either because, hey, look, we got to, I, I don't have enough resources to build this wall unless somebody helps me by f finishing this stone core. Will somebody come over here um, and then do it? But then on on top of that, when you generate goods, you can hold on to them for yourself very greedily uh, to have a wide variety to use them for, mostly uh, making troops to get them out there and get personal glory on the battlefield, or you can donate them. And th there is honor. There are also known as victory points for just donating to the greater good. If when I generate gold, I put it in here, I'll get a couple of points. If I keep doing that, that could be a sizable portion, even if I never build the wall at all. Because every time you, when you're building or uh, you know, um, you know, extending, and oh my gosh, the production value on this game is so cool. As this wall starts to grow right in front of you. Um, every time you do it, when you're using my stuff, it's like I contributed, or I did, I directly contributed to it, and I got points out of it also. Which means, I mean, effectively, in a two-player game anyway, you got fewer points because I was getting them as well. I, I, the, this, the, this idea of players in a competitive game having a shared communal goal that they can all contribute to uh, in, in different ways 
Could have been a whole game by itself. And yet it's just another part of this. But of everything in this game, I think it's a little thing, but probably my favorite. The coolest new idea are these command cards. And really, I can't just say one good thing about these. The fact that when I play the attack order, I get to do something, everybody gets to do something, and then I get to do something else. Or more often, um, I get to do something, and because I've played this, um, other people get to do other things with their cards. Paying attention, because if I, if I play raise banners on the same turn that you do attack order, your attack order becomes stronger. Is this something we work out together? Because you say, look, my attack order is not going to be good enough. If anybody could raise banner, my attack will be strong enough to keep us from getting overrun, and that's going to hurt everybody. Um, or if you if you're not playing, okay, the, I mean the the potential for actual negotiation around the table is big in this game. But some people don't want to do that. The game works great. Then it becomes more of a social deduction game, right? You haven't played your attack orders yet. Are you waiting for me? Uh, do, do I dare play my raised banners now? Because I don't want to help you. I don't want to make you stronger. I'm not going to play this until after I've seen you play that attack orders. Um, and, you know, and you can see, you can look at what's discarded. Okay, everybody else has played their attack orders except for you. Would you please play yours so I can now get my raised banner because I've wanted to play this for a while. That interplay between players, either through negotiation where people share information or where people don't share information, you try to figure out, okay, well, what, are you, what did you just play? Because one of my favorite mechanisms of all time is simultaneous action selection, and it works so well here, both because every action is something that I get to do and other people get to do different things. But then, once we played them, we have to figure out what order they're going to be in, which again is based on turn order. Sometimes I want to go right away. Sometimes, oh, is that what you're doing? Okay, I want your card to happen before mine, because that will get me extra resources for when I do my action. Yes, I'll take the second spot, please, instead of the first spot. Um, yeah. And then, on, on top of all that, you add incredible production value, gorgeous game, awesome. And you know, even if you didn't get the miniatures, I mean, although these miniatures are phenomenal, if you got the uh, the Meeple version, it's phenomenal too because they're very, very cool, you know, little um, wood, uh, you know, shaped meeples of horsemen and all that. But then it comes with a sticker sheet. And I mean, I don't have that here, but I've seen pictures. They look really cool. Much cooler than uh, meeples in most games because you get really beautiful art representing the horses and the spearmen and all the rest of and the and the clerks and all the rest of it too. Yeah, super, super impressive. And if all that weren't enough, a phenomenal automatic AI, really nicely done, very, very impressive. Also, really smartly done scaling for two players. Um, now, not everybody's going to like that. I mean, if you've ever played Fresco and you thought, boy, uh, I don't really like having this Leonardo character that we take control over. But for me and Jen, we love that. It gives us so much more to think about. All right, okay, next turn, I control the Reed clan. And I think I'm going to have them do, oh, but if I have them do this, that's going to help you. Okay, maybe I'll have them do this other thing instead. Uh, you know, it just adds more layers to the gameplay. And then, cherry on top, this co-op game is great. Really nicely done. Um, you basically, it just comes with a whole boatload of extra cards. Some of them, new generals that give you co-op special abilities, although you can use the regular generals or the co-op generals. New um, objective cards that you have to, this is the way you win, you have to complete objective cards while racing to do everything else you normally do. Um, and new events that will just tear you down and slow you down over slowly over the game. You start out super strong, but as the game goes on, you just get more weighed down by these horrible events. The fall of our academy, heavy rainfall, corruption, um, you know, uh, d distraction, uh, inflation, economic inflation, woodworms, um, and they just build up over time. So it kind of feels, by the time you get to the end, if you make it to the end, you're like, oh, can we just barely pull ourselves across the finish line? It uh, always reminds me of the end of the uh, first Die Hard movie when John McClane, he can barely walk. Uh, that's kind of what you feel like is you just pull yourself across the finish line. Really, really smartly done. And then a, a completely different set of invaders for co-op to change up the balance because the invaders come much, much faster when players are all working together and strategizing so the invaders get much stronger to compensate. It's interesting, one thing about the co-op that I thought I'd really like is the fact that um, at the beginning of the round, when everybody's trying, okay, what command card are we going to play? We are, the rules specifically say you can't talk about what you're going to play. Only after everybody has played can you then start strategizing. And that created a little bit of confusion for us because, well, okay, then we'll just talk about what we want to do in the previous year. And we, but that feels wrong, because it feels like the spirit of this is we're supposed to make decisions on our own and then deal with the outcome. And I don't know if that was as realized as well as something like um, Wonder Woman did a similar thing and did it much, much better. Or the crew, for that matter. But even still, 
Um, the co-op game is great. I do. I would say the Great Wall is at its best as a competitive game. But I could certainly see people falling in love with it as a co-op game as well. It's much uh, more complex. I wouldn't want to start anybody playing the co-op game because all these extra events and things you have to do, I mean, and, you know, and especially if it's a two-player, you're having to deal with the, the read general, it gets a lot more complicated. Definitely start playing the competitive so you really get a sense for how it works. And then, and the nice thing is, the co-op's in the box. You can try it at some point eventually. And then if all that weren't enough, this was a monster hit on Kickstarter. And in my room over there, I've got like four boxes boxes of additional content you can get. Uh, add mythological ancient beasts that come and attack. There's spaces on the board. Add Genghis Khan, who literally runs around from um, from uh, invader card to invader card, buffing them up. Uh, a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, you know, the things that um, you know build up the worker placement in addition to the combat stuff. So the game has a lot of room for expansion. You don't need it. Just if you get the main box, and even if you don't get the miniatures, you are getting a full experience that will give you I can't say how much replayability because uh, did, did you see how many generals we get in this game? It's 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 crazy. Uh, it's it's very impressive, and that's that's why I say I had to start out by saying uh, good call, Tom, putting this in the top ten games of the year. I'm not sure if I if I rank it quite that high. I'd probably want to play it at a higher player count because it's good at two. Obviously, this is going to be better with more and more opportunities for um you know the interplay between players. But yeah, oh, and I forgot to mention my one big complaint about the game is. Oh boy, is it long. I would love to see an official variant from Waken Realms that was more of an express mode that lets you uh, maybe just have a little bit of extra setup steps and that lets you skip the first couple of years or something like that so you can just get right into the thick of it and skip the whole let's slowly build up for a little while so that you could shave 30% of the game off. Oh, that would be chef's kiss. But even still, even if it is a bit on the long side for our taste, cannot deny it is a fantastic time. Very very impressed uh, by Awakened Realms' uh, biggest, uh, well, you know, certainly its most euro -y game to date, The Great Wall. And that was the run-through, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye